Hey guys, today we're going to be learning about tables, graphs, charts, timelines, all that great stuff that you need to know to be able to analyze things, especially in social studies class. Um, you probably practice tables, charts, and all that in at least math class. Um, same concept, we're going to look at bar graphs, line graphs, that kind of stuff. Uh, the new thing might be timelines, and hopefully you've messed around with timelines a little bit, so we're going to get into a little bit more of what you need to know about timelines. So the first thing you need to know um, is that timeline, timelines um, look kind of like this. I'm going to put a picture up here right now so you can see it. We read them from left to right. So you start all the way at the left and you read it from right. They're organized chronologically. Chronologically means the order in which they happen. So the oldest events are going to go all the way to the left and the newer events are going to go all the way to the right. In order to figure out, like, if they ask questions about, like, say, distance, like, how many years between two events, you may need to use some math skills to figure out the answer. So you might need to add or subtract um, to figure out answers to, like, exactly how much time passed between the things, between the events. Um, you need to read all the labels and the dates in order to answer the questions. Understand that the events on the left side, like I said, happen first in history, while the newest events are all the way to the right. Time is arranged in B.C. A.D. B.C. stands for before Christ, and A.D. does not mean after death. Almost every single person that comes my way in social studies seems to think A.D. means after death. It does not. It means anno domini. Um, the current way to do that, and the reason why B.C. A.D. was used is back when history and religion were very tied in together. They separated things both with, with before Christ was born and Anno Domini, which means the year of our Lord. Um, it means after his birth, okay? Uh, the current way to say it that they use more often in social studies now is BCE and CE. BCE means before common era and CE means common era. It's the same distinction, it's the same thing. BC is exactly the same as BCE. AD is exactly the same as CE. Now, if we were going to look at a problem, and I'm going to throw that up there so you can see. If we're going to look at a problem um, like this, where you have different civilizations arranged in different orders of time, um, and then we asked a question that was, which of the following shows the chronological order of ancient civilizations? And I give you the choices on the board. Um, most people are going to be like, I don't know how to do this. So the first thing that I would do when I was looking at these chronological orders of ancient civilizations is that I would look to see um, in these choices which one would come first. So the first one, obviously, would be either ancient Mesopotamia, ancient Egypt, ancient India. So looking here... Ancient Mesopotamia was the first one that happened, okay? So let's see if in this order, ancient China would have been next. Um, okay, so far so good. Imperial China, uh, that's all the way over here, and then ancient India. Oh, I had to go back, so no, that can't be it, because remember, it has to go from left to right. Uh, Japanese civilization was all the way over here, that cannot be a choice. Let's see, ancient Egypt is right here. So next in this choice, ancient India. Ancient India, good, oops. Um, next, ancient Rome, ancient Rome, yes, and then Imperial China, next, yes. So the answer here would be B. All right, so moving on to graphs, because you're going to practice a little bit of timeline stuff in your notebook, and you're going to do a little bit more practice online. So let's look at graphs. Every graph must have a title. The title tells you what the graph is about. Just like with titles on maps tells you what it's about, same thing with graphs. You gotta have a title to know what you're looking at. Um, there's many different kinds of graphs. A bar graph is used to compare two or more things. Usually those two things are unrelated to each other. So like how many kids like, I don't know, different flavors of pizza toppings. So like if you took a survey to see how many kids like pepperoni pizza and how many kids like sausage pizza, those things aren't related to each other. Um, how many kids you survey isn't dependent on how many kids like or what kind of pizza toppings kids like. It could be a different answer depending on where you go to survey. Um, a line graph is two things that are connected to each other, such as how much a plant grows um, over time, okay, because every day a plant's going to grow a little bit more. They're connected to each other. So a plant is going to grow a little bit more each day, and you're going to add it together. So that would be a line graph. Um, a, every graph has an x-axis, which is a horizontal line. Horizontal is 
um, cross this way, it's along the bottom of the graph and it contains the independent variable and that's what is changing. The y-axis is the up and down line, the vertical line, and it's along the left side of the graph and it contains the dependent variable, what is being measured. So if we look at this bar graph, the ages of people at a family reunion, uh, what you see is uh, a bunch of ages and a bunch of numbers of people. That's why this is a bar graph, because the number of people is not dependent on the ages. So to just say like only six people with, that are nine can come to this party, it's not dependent on that. So the question says, how many more 20 to 29 year olds were at the reunion than 40 to 49 year olds? To do this, you're going to have to measure how many 20 to 29 year olds were there, which is here look, we're looking at the pink bar, it's 18. And then you're going to look at um, how many more were there than 40 to 49 year olds. So 40 to 49 year olds were 6. So to answer this question, I have to take 18 and subtract 6. So the answer from 18 minus 6 would be 12. So the answer here would be C. So tables are where information is organized in columns or rows. A table is used to organize large amounts of information so that individual facts can be analyzed and compared. Um, so basically, if you are trying to organize, like say our civilizations, and we want to look at um, what the jobs of women are, what the jobs of men are, um, what the jobs of children are, what they did, and we put like three civilizations down the thing and we put what women did in Mesopotamia, what women did in Egypt, what women did in Rome, and we looked at all of it in one chart or one table, that would let us quickly analyze individual facts, okay? Charts can show relationships between topics or the flow of ideas, from big topics to smaller topics. Pie charts show that relationship from a part to a whole. So like if you're looking at a whole big group of people and five kids uh, like pepperoni pizza with when you surveyed a hundred kids you're gonna see a very small slice of pie that way um, if you are paying close attention you should look at any keys that might be included to help you read the chart um, sometimes they'll say that certain colors mean certain things or dotted lines versus solid lines so if you look at keys you need to look at those first so you understand what you're looking at so I'm going to throw this chart up on here now. This chart right here, this table, shows people of Southwest ancient, our Southwest, ancient Southwest Asia. I'm totally reading wrong. This looks at three groups of people, Phoenicians, Israelites, and Assyrians. Um, for these people, we're going to look at their economic activities, their contributions, their government, and their expansion. So what they're asking for, the first thing is, what economic activity did all three civilizations have in common? So you're going to go to economic activities, and you're going to look at each of the three civilizations here. You have traders and sailors, herders and sail trades, and farmers and traders. What you got the same in all of them is trading. So the answer for the first one is trading. Which of the following groups took control of lands from Mesopotamia to Egypt? So if I'm looking at um, groups that took control of lands, I want to look at expansion. Because that when you take control of lands, you add lands to your groups. So I want to look at conquering lands or taking control of lands from Mesopotamia to Egypt. And if I look across at expansion, Phoenicians established cities around the Mediterranean Sea, Israelites ex exiled in Babylon, and they scattered throughout the Mediterranean, and Assyrians conquered lands from Mesopotamia to Egypt. So the one that matches is conquered lands from Mesopotamia to Egypt, which is Assyrians. So the answer for this one would be A. And lastly, here is a little chart to look at. So this shows the Greeks, gods, and goddesses. This is where it's important to pay attention to the key. So if you look, coming off of Zeus, you have solid lines and dotted lines. So the key shows you that the solid lines are the brothers and sisters of Zeus, while the dotted lines are children of Zeus. So the question is, what is the relationship between Zeus and Poseidon? So if I take Zeus and follow it down to Poseidon, the kind of line that is, jo that is joining them is a solid line. So that shows you right there that the type of um, relationship between the two is brothers, not children, because children is a dotted line. So the answer is that Zeus and Poseidon are brothers. 
So if I look to see where it says anything about brothers, the only one that does is A. Zeus is the brother of Poseidon because B says something about Poseidon and being the father or Zeus being the father for C or cousins for D, which isn't even part of the chart really unless you start looking at like sisters and brothers and their kids, which it doesn't show like kids of anybody else except for Zeus. Um, so that's how you read tables and charts. You are going to do a little bit of practice with that. Um, it, you have some places you can go to on your playlist, so pra pra practice that. And then you're going to um, do some work with timelines, tables, graphs, and charts. Uh, you're going to make your own personal timeline in your notebook, and you're going to do a, a packet of some different tables, charts, and graphs that you get to practice with. All right, I will see you later, boys and girls. Thanks, have a great day, and stay safe.